Welcome back to our Norwegian Mitten Knit Along with our special guest, Kristen Nicholas. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> you ready to do this? I am. So in this episode, we are gonna be shaping the fingertips, that nice pointy Norwegian fingertip on these mittens. And then we're gonna go back to that afterthought thumb and show you how to put that in. So Kristen, why don't you walk us through those uh, the decreases to make that unique shape at the top of the mitten. Okay. It's really easy after the first round. Okay. As, I love to hear that. You know, as, <laughs> as with everything, once you do it, once or twice, you're all set. So uh, you're gonna follow your chart and actually it, you'll see this empty space when you look at your chart and that means that you're gonna do a decrease. That means the stitch disappears. So you're gonna turn two stitches into one stitch. Right, so you're gonna keep seeing those the checkerboard, those three stitches, keep heading upwards, and then the mitten chart sort of marches away from it as you begin to make that pointed tip. Right, and so this is the little checkerboard, and you can see a decrease here and here on either side, and there's the checkerboard, and then on the other side, you can see these decreases. So the decreases make the tip. Yeah. And after it, it, your decreases start going really fast after a while, and this does not take long to do at the top. And it makes it so neat and, you know, really pretty. I love a pointed mitten top. Yeah, it's very like my nice. favorite thing. Okay, so I'm going to work my little checkerboard, which is all the way along the rest of the mitten until you get to the very, very end. You keep your checkerboard at either side. Yeah, so if you placed your stitch markers earlier in the mitten, those are gonna stay in place to help remind you to do those, those three stitches in the checkerboard pattern. Right, okay. So we're going to slip the marker and then we're going to do a slip, slip knit. Yeah. So I'm gonna slip this and slip this and then I'm going to put them back on here and I'm going to knit two together. Yeah. And so what that is doing is it's making a left leaning decrease. Yeah, so your decreases are gonna lean in towards the point of that mitten that we're making. And it makes like a little bit of a decorative thing. So I'm just gonna knit across here. Yeah, at this point you'll still be working your chart, but you won't actually be changing colors because you'll be past the top of the flower portion of the chart. Right. You'll still have to... Have to twist the thing in the back. Yeah, you'll still have to catch the those back. floats, but you won't have to change colors as you work across the front of the mitten. So now I'm back at the marker where I have to do my next decrease, and I'm going to do a right-leaning decrease by putting my needle in there and knitting these two together. So that's just a knit two together. Right. Yeah. And now on my next needle, it's I'm going to do my small checkerboard. Yeah, One. so now you're on the back of the mitten with the circles pattern, but you're keeping those that three stitch checkerboard in pattern. And I'll show you that one decrease again now. So I'm going to slip, slip, put them back over here and knit these two together. And so that's the left leading decrease. And yep. you're gonna keep doing that all the way around the mitten. And you do the decreases on every row. So it has this nice V tip. Yeah, so you start with those three, then you do your slip slip knit, knit until the last two stitches on that side, knit two together, flip it, knit your three, slip slip knit, work your circles chart across the back of the mitten, the last two stitches are your knit two together and you keep that going that way until? Until you get about 12 stitches left. And then at that point, I just knit two together all the way around, break the yarn, thread through, and pull it to the back. Yeah, so if you need a little help with your slip slip knits and your knit two togethers, we do have stitch supports. We'll put a link for that above so you can get a really slow deep dive on slip slip knit and knit two together. And if you like want a little review of that knit two together all the way around and then cinching the top of the mitten closed, you're gonna wanna go back to episode three of our Bargello mittens uh, in this series because that little bit is the same at the top of this mitten too. When we got down to 12 stitches at the top of this mitten, knit two together all the way around, then you run the tail through and cinch it closed. 
And that's it. Yeah. So now we're going to... <laughs> thumb time! To take care of the afterthought thumb. I love this. This yeah. is this really is, one of my favorite things in knitting. Is it really? It really is. It, it is kind of magical. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to work on my little swatch here. This is not a mitten. This is like part of a mitten. But you can see those stitches that I worked in the contrast color. So what's going to happen is we are going to rip those stitches out, which sounds really scary, but it's not too bad. No. And then we're going to knit, pick up on either side. There's going to be a hole. We're going to pick up on either side, and then we're going to make a tube, sort of like an extension for the thumb. Is that a good way to explain it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Okay. So when we've got eight stitches here, so I am going to use one needle and I'm going to look at the stitches here. And what, what I do is I just go through, I look at each stitch, I go through and I pick up. Now you have to, you're gonna have to um, put put them on the stitch needle on the needles properly after you finish but this way you're picking up all the stitches so that they don't fall off and there's my last my last two is right there and there so those you can see eight eight legs yeah one two three four five six seven eight and now on the top I'm going to Take another needle and I'm going to look here. And so I'm going to pick up, pick up here and here. Here and here. Here and here. Gets a little tight there. There. And there. And there. Okay. And now what we can do is we can, we, you can either pull the thread out or you can snip it. You can middle. snip it. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why you want to use a scrap yarn that's really easy to see against your work especially if you're going to do the snip method because you you can really see it now watch okay so it's tight so sometimes i'll take another another needle and just sort of finesse this pick it apart and I love it. as i'm doing this do you see how they're on the needle yeah isn't that cool that's very cool if these thing, kind of things make you happy. <laughs> they make me happy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, um, I don't know, like, I'm a little crazy with mine, and I just I just pull the thread you out. You pull the thread out. You can do I, that, yeah. And then I pick up the stitches. Yeah. Now, but this I, is my float. I like the risk. Yeah. You can, it, I guess the first time, this is kind <laughs> of maybe yeah. better to do, but then you can... I mean, I've ripped off the whole bottom of my sweater yeah. and then knit the rib down when yeah. I have a problem. And it's the same idea as this afterthought thumb. Yeah. Okay. So there's there all go. my stitches. Now, that one float, it, I'm going to have to tuck that in. Okay. So now, they're all picked up. On the bottom part, they're pretty much all set up. This gets a little bit funky here on the top part, but it works out. Okay. So I've got... I've got, I'm going to have 16 stitches. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have five. And then we have to pick up one stitch at each corner. Yes. Here. And that, that's going to add a corner stitch. Not a, is it a corner stitch? A salvage stitch, sort of like. Yeah. It's an extra stitch. Because otherwise you have a little bit of a gap on either side of the thumb. So you need to pick those stitches up so that when this thumb is worked, it's, it, it's solidly connected to the fabric of your mitten, but then we can just decrease it away. Right, yeah. 
Okay, so we're going to pick up the stitches. Now, here I'm running into a twisted stitch. And you might have that, you might not. And so I'm going to fix it by knitting into the back of this stitch. Oh yeah, it's so easy. Your, your knit stitches should be oriented so that if you were to straighten it out, the right hand side of your stitch should be forward facing you and the left hand side should be on the back of the needle. So if you find that the stitch is twisted and the left hand side of it is towards you, you can knit into the back loop like Kristen just did to seat it back on your needles properly. See, she's doing another right one here. Yeah. It's the way I put the needle through. When you picked the, up. When you pick up, that's yeah. what happens. Yeah, and it's nothing to worry about. Nope. You can correct it. And it's okay if you don't correct it too. I mean, exactly. if you didn't realize that that's what it was and you just knit all these stitches, nobody's gonna know. No one is gonna know, no there's, one. There's no mitten police. That's right. Okay, so I've worked across my eight. And now here, I'm actually going to pick up, I'm going to grab this needle. Here's my thread. And I am going to go down right through here. And I'm going to pick up a stitch. Yeah. So I'm going to pull it through. And there's my extra stitch Lovely. for the side. And now we're going to go across here on the top part of it, on the top part of the hole. So I'm going to knit and this, I'm not sure. Oh, is that a float? Yeah, I think it's a float. Let's see. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to drop that. And so here, here's the secret oh, no, too. No, I can't drop that. I'm going to knit it together. You, yeah, you can knit it together or you could and this one here, my float is on the top. I'm just gonna put it below. So I sh I'm gonna knit across here. Yeah, there's no 100% right or wrong way to do this as long as you come out with the right number of stitches at the end of it. Right. And even if you're one stitch off, it's really not gonna matter. It's a no. little fiddly right there because my float, I'm trying to float put my float towards the back of the fabric. Yep, to keep it on the inside. To keep it on the inside. That, and that. So now what do I have? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One was from the side and there's seven on the top, which is what I usually end up with. And now I've got to pick up right here. Yep. So again, there's no perfect place to pick up that stitch in between the needles. To wherever it sort of feels good to pick up that stitch and put it. So on this next round, I'm going to start flipping these from the two needles into three. And, and now you have 17 stitches and we want to end up with 16, right? Yep, so I can just knit two together somewhere. Yeah. I'm going to do it over here at the side. Okay. So what if I was, what if I was at that last gap between the, the last needle and the first needle again and it and I picked up the one stitch, but it still felt like a really big gap. Would you pick up a second stitch? Um, you know what I do? I just, when I'm weaving in my tail end, I just fix it with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you could, if you wanted to add another stitch and then decrease it, but I just, I just fix it in the, in the sort in the of finishing in the finishing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's always a good way to help close up little gaps that happen when you when you change the direction of your knitting like this is when you make sure that when you start colors you leave nice long tails when you finish colors you leave nice long tails because then you can use those to weave weave those little gaps closed and I'm going to pick up the side stitch and then move over to here pick up this is a little bit fiddly here okay take these two yeah, thumbs now, are, I think, the fiddliest part because it's the least amount of stitches on the same number of needles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to demo this, too, because you really have to do it to understand it. Yeah. And so if you're afraid to do it, what I would do is knit a small four-inch swatch, do the afterthought in the middle of the swatch, and, and then tr practice it. Practice yeah. it because... It's going to take you not long. It's not like you have to knit the whole thumb on this swatch, but at least you under then understand it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of scary doing an afterthought. 
<laughs> the first time through, yeah. It really is. But then you feel like you've got confidence. So practice swatch is always, it's always a good thing. You have to do a swatch to get your gauge anyway. Right, yeah, you could do the afterthought right there in the middle. Yeah. Okay. So you're just going to keep going round and round and round and round and round until you get your thumb as long as it needs to be. Yep. And that'll be specified in the pattern. But again, just like with the length of the mitten, if your thumb is a little bit shorter or your thumb is a little bit longer, you're going to keep going until you get just about up to the tip of your thumb. And then yep. you'll start the decreases as they're written. And the great thing about those is it's the same. It's as the, the top same of the thing. So you can keep... You can keep one stitch here, but I usually just do them right next to each other. Yeah. And it doesn't take, uh, what's it take like? You go from 16 to, you get rid of four. So it takes like four rows yeah. to get rid of it. Yeah. And if you do the knit two around the top, it only takes three. Yeah. And it, it's not as decorative, but you're also not working in the color work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as we say, there is no knitting police if it's not no. perfect. That's right. That's right. So then that's it. So that's your finished mitten. Um, you're going to want to go back to that rolled hem that you started uh, flat. There'll be a little bit of a gap in it that you're going to need to seam closed. And we do cover that um, with the Bargello mittens at the end of episode three. I'll put a link to that up above here. Um, that'll walk you through how to close up the gap mm -hmm. in that rolled hem. And then you're going to want to block your mittens, which again, we cover at the end mm -hmm. of episode three. With that great mitten blocker with the, the V tip. Yes, actually. That is fantastic. Let's show you that again. Yeah. Because. Totally. And we can show you with both, with both mittens. Uh, this is the mitten blocker. Oh, yeah, I've got both thumbs. We'll show you with both mittens here. Uh, here, do you want to do the, yeah. the honors with, sure. with that mitten? So our mitten blockers have two shapes. They have a pointed top and a rounded bottom so that you can block both kinds of mittens. So Kristen's using the pointed top. I'm going to use the rounded top. I like to sort of scrunch the mittens and then slide the mitten blocker in, especially with color work, and then just take your time because you want to make sure you don't catch any of those floats on the edges. And you can pull it all the way down. And then the thumbs also have either a pointed tip or a rounded tip because our Bargello mittens are rounded top and rounded thumb. I'm putting it in the thumb with the rounded part upwards. There we go. Yeah. That is a really great tool. And I like how the flowers, they, if, if this was damp, it would help the air circulation and it would dry faster. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So those little holes that are in the blocker, I'm just going to be careful in removing this so I don't catch any of those floats on the inside of the mitten. So yeah, all those little flowers help with the airflow so that your projects dry faster. And when you're done, you just, when your project is done, whether you've wet blocked it or steam blocked it, the little thumb pops out and you stick it back in there for storage and you're good until the next pair of mittens that you make. Yeah, so in the next segment, we are going oh. to go a little wild. Yes. It's a whole different mindset. We're going to add this beautiful embroidery to embellish our plain work. Oh, I'm so excited. When I tell you that this episode that's coming up next, the embroidery episode, is the whole reason why we did this whole series on mittens. <laughs> so once again... If you haven't yet picked up a kit, you can pick up a kit for the Mittens with Kristen at OneBigHappy.com. The kit has enough yarn in it for you to make one of each pair of these mittens and to do all the fancy embroidery work. So we hope that you'll come back in the next episode and join us for that. But until then, happy, happy knitting! knitting.